morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am the pastor of the Emmett Springs Community Presbyterian Church. Pentecost is here, and I have for many months longed to be able to be united with you. And what better day with the full presence of the Spirit? I would like to take this opportunity to welcome those who are visitors who have not been in, in worship here before. Anybody? Welcome. Would you, would you mind um, tell us who you are? Yeah. And I would like to also welcome those who are joining us by Zoom. Today's a Pentecost. So we are here all feeling the wind of the Holy Spirit beneath our wings. Let us prepare our hearts to go with the wind during the prayer. Prepare for worship. Uh, I'll be the one, and together we'll be the whole. Uh, on that day of Pentecost, long ago, people gathered to hear the word proclaimed. We too gather today to celebrate the coming of the Spirit. All came upon the community of faith as they encountered the living Lord. Make us aware, Holy Spirit, of the majesty of God's continuing presence. Let us worship God. Please stand and join me in singing hymn number 401. <laughs> Yeah. 
God's Spirit is here and at work in each of us personally and communally. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven and free to be new dreams for this broken world. Thanks be to God. So, may I join this section? Did you know what, what I said when I first came to see you? The konnichiwa? That's hello in Japanese. Yeah, and I say sonoliedri, konnichiwa. I'm very glad to meet you. That's in Italian. <laughs> and I brought this, and somebody put it upside down. Sometimes, <laughs> right? It's a foreign language. You can't tell which, which side is up. <laughs> it goes like this. And this is, um, that's, this is the only piece of art that I made when I was in seminary. And I'm not a painter, but I love words. I love languages. So this is a Psalm 50. And what is left here? Maybe Shepa can read it. <laughs> it's a Psalm in black, in Hebrew, and it goes this way. This way. This way. Right. That's right, it goes this way. And you see the little colors? You see the little colors? It's in Japanese, same song, going this way. Right. Up and down from left to right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Then, <laughs> then I put all around it a border in German, in Italian, in Greek. So there are many, many languages. But even in one language, English, I am so struck by how many words we have the same thing. Trey and I were driving up this morning, we noticed really interesting shape of cow. In Japanese, we have so many different names for, for, for cow. We have so many different names for rain. And we have many words for a river here in English. Anybody help me say different name, names of river? Street. Stream. What's that? Real. We say it in English. Real, yeah. yeah. So, you know, each language is so rich. We feel like we can say everything we want to say. But yet, something is beyond our words. Right? Something we cannot, it's not because it's foreign language. Even in English, sometimes we have feelings that it just cannot be expressed. And the joy I am feeling this morning being with y'all, it's one of those feelings that just, it's, people say, are you excited? Yeah, but that's not enough. So God is like that. No <laughs> one language, no one word is enough to describe what God is like. So God sent us Jesus. By watching him, what he did, the things, listening to what he taught, with all of who he is, from the very beginning of his birth story all the way to his death and his resurrection, with all, all of that, we know what God is like. Okay? So then when the time came for God, for, for Jesus, that he could no longer be walking among us, he promised that we would not be alone. And instead, he would send a comforter, somebody to walk along us for always. And that's the Holy Spirit. And today, we are remembering in the church the time Holy Spirit came. 
for good. The Pentecost comes only once a year. The Holy Spirit came, stayed with us always. So, would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your promise of the gift of your spirit. We open our hearts to receive you now, so we can follow Jesus every day. Let us prepare our hearts to hear God's word. Out of power and grace, fill us with the wisdom of your word and the understanding of your spirit, so that we may be your church, the people with dreams and visions at work in all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading this morning from the Old Testament is in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. This is now from the word of the Lord. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heaven, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we should be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel. Because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This morning, second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of, rush of wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak to other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it? that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitor from, visitors from Rome, both Jews and Muslims. Cretan and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to 
one another, what does this mean? But others sneer and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last day, it will be, God declared, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men Shall dream dreams. The word of God. Thanks be to God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, like the author of the Book of Acts. Growing up, Many of us were taught that Pentecost was the birthday of the Christian church. And so goes the logic that the first original Pente day of Pentecost must have been when the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and those who were gathered there 50 days after first Easter. But just as the last summer was the Jewish Passover Seder, Jesus was celebrating with the disciples. Pentecost was, and still is, today, the Jewish festival of Shavuot in Hebrew, 50 days after Passover. Shavuot remembers receiving of God's law, the Torah, which is the gift of God for the people of God, given to Moses on Mount Sinai. The birthday of the church did not happen out of the blue sea. The people were all together in one place to mark the receiving of God's gift of Torah from Pentecost. And also, these were the people who had just said goodbye to Jesus. And they remember Jesus' promise that I will not leave you alone. I will send you the Holy Spirit who will come out of the and comfort her. So those, those of us who have lost somebody very, very dear to us knows that strange feeling of living our world continues. But we know something has forever changed. The future is dark. So these were the people who are gathered to commemorate the gift of God that God once sent through Jesus, through Moses, and yet still waiting for that promise of God, Jesus, to come and come true. So these were, I think it's one of those moments when people did not have words. The people were all together in one place. And that is when now the God's gift of Holy Spirit came upon them, just as Jesus had promised. The birth of the church, which to be so casually say Pentecost, happy birthday, come from that place of anxiety, uncertainty, and desperately holding on to the hope that Jesus had left for them. So we are as we sit together in this place. We are not just celebrating this one day of Pentecost, but we are being held in and knowing ourselves as this part of this long saga. It's a long love story of God and God's people. And God is still writing that story today. As we, as we hear the word, of, word on this day of Pentecost, we are part of the past, the present, and God's future, all in one. 
So also, the reading from the Hebrew scripture that he read to us this morning is another story that helps us explore the meaning of Pentecost for us as the church. So this story is known popular, popularly as the story of the Tower of Babel. And the popular interpretation of it goes something like this. It's a story about human arrogance in attempting to build a tower reaching to the sky as if to claim equality with God. And God foils this human scheme by mixing up their language and scattering them all over the face of the earth. It's been told as a story of vain human pride and God's punishment. Sounds clear enough. Sounds like there's a simple, clear moral lesson there. But a closer reading of the text shows us something different. The story is part of the prehistory of the Bible. This is the time, the major story before this would be the Noah's Ark. So these are the new people. All, of, all people on the earth shared one language, it says. As they migrated, they came upon a valley and settled in that place. With everyone speaking the same language, using the same words, living within the boundary of that place, things were going smoothly for them. And so they wished to preserve the sameness and the safety of living within that boundary. And to establish their identity, thereby making a name for themselves. God calls them tomorrow, which literally means the children of Adam, Adam, the earth. The human beings formed from the dust of the earth. So to make a name for themselves, the mortals made of dust take the dust from bricks and start to build a city and a tower. Because otherwise they thought they would be scattered abroad over the face of the earth and they did not want that. They didn't want to chase any dreams or see any vision. They wanted to stay right where they were as one people. And rather than arrogance and pride, the sentiment I read in these, in these words is a fear and guardedness. The fear of losing that sameness and hence the urge to keep everyone living in the same place, speaking the same language, having the same lifestyle. Yeah, looking pretty much the same way. They thought if they could build a city with a tall power, they would be securely anchored in one place as one people and make and make them name for themselves, be somebody, and not be dispersed all over the world. And in the earth, God forbid. <laughs> See the irony there? And God saw what they were up to. But this is God, you know, the creator of the universe who took pains in the beginning to create every kind of creatures, the fish, the bird, and the wild animals of every kind, and filled all the earth, and put the models in charge of taking care of this wild variety of things. But rather than punishing the mortals by leaving them to their own devices, God takes action, which is always loving, life-giving, and for the good of the world. God mixed up the language of the monolingual morals, so they could not understand one another anymore, creating multilingual humanity, and dispersed them on the face of the whole, whole earth, creating a multicultural world. And all done with God's signature touch of variety and diversity. 
In this story, it's all about language. But I think language is like a metaphor. Language is what we share with others, what we experience. And we do not experience life on our own. It is always about community. Our life happens in community. And it is very useful that we can share that from community to community. They say, even religion is like language. Theology, theo God, logic from logos word, it's a God talk. We talk different God talk. And for Christian, the word is Jesus Christ. I remember Karl Barth saying he used to think of Jesus as the messenger of God. And towards his life, the end of his life, he said. I realize Jesus is the message. But I digress. My point was we have language, and what sometimes we think we can say it all. <clears throat> I left Japan when I was 15, and my friends to come to this country to study. My Japanese friend asked me, What do you think you're going to be thinking? in Japanese or in English. And at the time, I was lost for words. I did not know. Since I did not have the language, I did not know what it, I could not even think what it was like to think in English. So I told them, well, when I get there, I'll let you know. <laughs> and I went on to study Italian. And I had to study Greek and Hebrew. So I got to know what it's like, you know, I'm only fluent in English and Japanese. I got to know what it's like to really wear that language, kind of get under the skin. So now my friends ask me, which is the most difficult language? And I thought about it a little bit. One can say, well, this language has simpler grammar than this one. In Japanese, we have like 20 words to just to say I, but most of the time we don't even use the subject when we say something. And I learned Italian enough to be dangerous, but when I learned, there are so many different degrees of past. Like kind of, that's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say which language has, you know, more complexity in terms of grammar, but all language is sufficient or not to give deepest expression to a deepest experience. So if the language grammar is simple, that means you're relying on something else from that culture to understand it. And in all of the language, even though I only know handball, I'm pretty sure there's an expression that goes, I am at loss for words. The words are not just enough. But even in that space, maybe in that space is our common humanity. Fast forward to the day of Pentecost in the Book of Acts, when all were together in one place. Those followers of Jesus were all Galileans from Galilee, when we are told. And they spoke the Galilean dialect of the Aramaic language. Yet, when the Holy Spirit came upon them with the sound of the fierce wind, they were empowered to speak the languages that were not their own. Interesting, Holy Spirit did not wipe out the variety. Instead, the tongue you know, the, the plain like tongue rested on each one of us, empowering each one of us to be able to speak and communicate. That individual distinct uniqueness was preserved. Somehow, Holy Spirit had the power to unite us. When they were speaking about the mighty ones of God. 
and drawn by the sound of the Russian wind, people living in Jerusalem came to see what was happening, forming a crowd. And they were immigrants. He says there were Jews from all the nations up ahead. And they had immigrated from areas of the Roman Empire to the north, east, south, and west of Jerusalem. And as subject of Rome, they knew Greek, the language of the empire, but they also spoke the languages of the native land. And it was not by the language of the empire that they understood what they were talking about, the mighty power of God, the of God. And it was their native language, each of them heard, as those Galilean followers of Jesus spoke of God's mighty deeds. God who mixed up the languages of the fearful people in the beginning. He is the God who now empowers them to speak the languages of the world, to tell the gospel in every tongue. On the day of Pentecost, the church was born with the divine permission to be free to speak each language that's been given to them, preserving the variety and the variegated beauty of the people of God everywhere. So on this day of Pentecost, we, the Heavens Church and the Valley community, we are all together this place. And like those gathered on that day of Pentecost, we are a community of diverse people. We are a mixed bag of people. Some of us belong to the families who live in a valley for generations. Some of us belong you know, some, or not belong. Some of us are by nature transplants. Some are happy retired to this place. And some of you are only here in Zoom. And your pastor is an immigrant from the other side of the world. We have different languages of culture and tradition. And some things that mark us as individuals have potential to divide us. Many of us are former member of the church, while some of us are faithful friends of the church. Some of us are proud political conservatives, and some of us are proud political liberals. Some of us say green, and some of us always say red, and I say Christmas. <laughs> and for those of you out-of-state visitors, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a question that you are prepared. You must be prepared to answer on the spot. <laughs> we too, we too are a variegated band of the follower of Jesus. Are we open to receive the spirit, the gift of spirit that will enable us to listen to each other deeply? despite these differences. We are not to fear these differences among us, but we are called to trust in the Holy Spirit who moves and empowers us to listen deeply to one another and speak to one another in the language that is always be heard, that is the language of love. And we will be there for one another for the moment when no words would do. The Holy Spirit who gave birth to the church on that day of Pentecost long ago, renews us today as the body of Christ, so that we too may bear witness to the mighty works of God in this valley, in this nation, and in this world. And at such times as this, when the skeptics dismiss the spirit-filled band of Jesus' followers as very drunk with new wine, Peter spoke in their defense. No, they are not drunk. Rather, you are witnessing what the prophet Joel had said 
I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see vision. Your elders will dream dreams. Growing up in a small church in the heart of downtown Tokyo, listening to the word of God in Japanese, reading the scripture in Japanese, and saying a creed in Japanese, I never imagined I would be preaching in English on the other side of the globe, not in my wildest dreams. All together now, Emmett Springs Community Presbyterian Church and the Friends of the Valley. What dreams shall we dream? such times as this. What prophetic word are we to speak in this fearful and broken world? What visions will we see? This day of Pentecost is another beginning. And we fear not diversity and variegated beauty of ourselves in this place. And it is the wind of the Holy Spirit that is beneath our wings. All together now, let us live into God's unfolding future. May it be so. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> And here we are going to sing is from Glory to God number 292. For those of you, uh, now I can't remember how many years we have had this, but this is an attempt of the church to keep on opening its heart to the variety of songs everywhere sung by other, mm -hmm. other Christians and other traditions. So this one I chose today, I think is a new one for you. It is not from, from the traditional Presbyterian kingdom. And I think I thought it was associated with a Chinese translation for it. And there's a it was associated with uh, Australia or New Zealand or we can look it up. Uh, but we are we are going to enjoy. Uh, I have asked the bear to play the melody once for us. It's a beautiful, catchy melody, and we can join and sing it together. Thank you. 
Now, I'm going to make place the turn and worship. After we hear the word, we have a response. We are invited by God to get gathered together, so we have called to worship. <clears throat> then in order to come face to face with ourselves before God who knows us better than ourselves, we pray a prayer of confession. And we prepare our hearts by asking the Holy Spirit to work within us because it is by the work of the Spirit in our heart, the word written becomes living word of God. And after we hear the word proclaimed, we are invited to respond with our love. So usually there's a place we, we affirmation of faith. And the Presbyterian Church, we are always responding to what is, we are trying at least, to respond to what is happening in God's beloved world. So we choose from many affirmation from the book of confession, which is the constitution of our church. But also, it is appropriate today, I believe, as the people who have gathered on the day of Pentecost to receive the God's gift and remember together our Jewish brothers and sisters who commemorates this day the receiving of the Ten Commandments. Pastor Laura preached a few weeks ago, maybe it was a week or few before, talked about Jesus' summary of the law and how Jesus was not coming up with those two double, brilliant double commandments out of the blue. Jesus was quoting from Torah, from the Deuteronomy and from Leviticus. Love your God with all your heart and soul. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So in loving our neighbor as ourselves, we know what it's like to love God. And that Torah, the summary of the law, what lies in the center, you know, the principle is the Ten Commandments. So I invite you all to read together the Ten Commandments. You shall not make wrong use of the name of your God. Remember the Sabbath. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's home. You shall not covet your neighbor's house or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us return to God the offering of our life and the gift on the earth. <laughs>
Friends, this is the joyful feast of our Lord. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at this table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. It belongs to no one church or denomination. In this place, all who would but put trust in Jesus invited to the table. Let us pray. God of all creation, pour out your Holy Spirit, we pray, into a gathering upon this bread and within this cup. Breathe new life into your people. Nourish our longing for justice. Deepen our hunger for peace. Strengthen us for service. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in this world. <coughs> so Jesus, on the night he was arrested, as he or at the table and pass over supper. He the bread, broke it, and gave thanks to God. And he said, giving to the disciples, take, eat. This is my body working for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup. Similarly, this is the cup of covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. With every time we drink this cup and eat this bread, we proclaim the saving grace of Jesus until he comes. These are the gifts of God. For the people of God. You are welcome at this table. I invite you to come to the center aisle, take bread, take a cup.
We continue with the people's prayer this morning. I would like to, um, for those of you who have um, not familiar, this is a people's prayer. We give joys and concerns, and every prayer that was lifted up for the community, the community would respond with "Lord, hear our prayer." And this morning, I would like to start with. Pray of thanksgiving for Myra, Ben, Mike. For those of us, those of you who are always being attentive, is, and it's such an act of selfless self sacrifice so that we can relax, open our hearts, and be receiving the spirit of So I'm grateful for those who serve and make our worship time worshipful. For this, I pray. Lord, Lord I pray our prayers. Yeah. I heard on um, NPR news yesterday, in not the news, an uh, alternative radio about um, our ambassador, Roy, a lady from India, that India is in trouble, because this country is in trouble. That Christians and Muslims are really being persecuted. So I guess not only for India, but our country and all countries around the world, we stop the hate and go with love. Lord, Lord we are I want to my hands for this sacred space. I've been uh, Counting the days from Passover to Shavuot with great anticipation of the <coughs> holiness of this day, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And I could either be on Zoom or I could be with you celebrating the Holy Spirit. So I'm so grateful for the, to have this place with me and to uh, share the joy of the Lord's coming. 
I just want to pray uh, for those who have been evacuated and lost their homes and for the firefighters who are still out there. Um, you may have noticed tents in the cabin room. They are still there. They're mopping up what's left of the Cerro Palado, but they're also moving out into the <clears throat> other valleys and canyons that we are part of. So I would just ask for their prayers. <laughs> I want to give thanks to Rob, to Siggy, and James Cooper, who also helped with what needed to be done to pull service together today. Prayers for the end of the war in Ukraine. Lord, hear our prayers. Yeah, um, thanks to Hosen and the Bodhi and the firefighters and the food that was given to the Bodhi that then ended up in the hands of some of us who took it to the Pueblo and it went to others in need. Um, so just thanks for food and distribution of that food. Let us continue our prayer by joining our hearts together. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your whole creation. Lead all nations in the way of justice and goodwill. Remove the borders we build around ourselves. Touch our hearts to be with those who are not like us. Awaken all people to the danger we have inflicted on the earth, your creation. Implant in each a reverence for all that you have made. Renew the earth with mercy. Let the healing rain fall upon the land where the fire is still raging. We remember the peoples who are grieving the loss of loved ones, little ones. With grown too deep for words, where war and other forms of violence threatens the very existence of life. Rain down your peace, your shalom upon us. Strengthen this congregation in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise and our lives may reflect your image. And with your spirit guiding, we offer our prayers. With the prayer Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. And for our last saying, it 
is number 66. If you are able, please rise in spirit or in body. May the grace of Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let us pass the peace of Christ. <laughs> Thank you. 